Hey guys, Captain Walnut here with another mob related video. Today I'm going to be showing off a flooded uh, flooded style spawning ground uh, the that can handle spiders. Now, I'm not the person who invented the whole idea of using water to push mobs around once they've spawned. But actually, I don't know who the guy was who invented it. I know I've seen JL's video where he showed off a pretty high yield one. Um, yeah, but I think I'm the first one to get it working with spiders. Um, I really, I need spiders for my mob sorting system. And so that's why I tried to get this thing working with that. You can see here that it's pretty decent rates and I'm a pretty fair distance away from it. I'm well beyond, um, the mobs freezing distance. You know, they freeze at about 40 blocks and I think that's 50 blocks away from me right now. So yeah, you can see that there doesn't seem to be any clogs and it's spitting out pretty consistent rates this entire time. It'll spit out pretty consistent rates the entire time um, that you're within spawning distance of this thing. So that's why I really like this type of design. Um, it's not as high as flow as some of the designs I've shown you guys in the past, but it's consistent and it handles the whole mob freezing thing um, very, very well. So let me get some light in on this business and I'll show you how all this works. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. Skeleton, for demonstrating how this thing works. Alright. So, um... The basic way, and the, this is pretty much the same as JL's design, is you have a two-wide lane that opens up and then water comes in and pushes you along at head height, or the mob along at head height. Now, the difference in it, from his design is that there's also water that runs along these side bits here. Um, and that's so that spiders can spawn. It leaves an air gap there so that there's enough space for a spider to spawn and then once a spider spawns he's touching these pressure plates so um, the water will open up and push him along here as you can see right there with that water there. Um, each lane's two sides operate independently so you can see here that th this guy's two sides operate and he shares uh, a water stream with this lane right here. Um, yeah, they all pretty much operate the same way. Uh, I hope you guys can see everything um, pretty good in here, even though it's so dark. Yeah, so it's all pretty much the same in here. Um, it's just mirrored on both sides from all, all in every direction. And yeah, all right, I'm going to set up a quick little model um, for to show you off the redstone, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, here's an isolated piece. Um, just so you guys can see the redstone, I am going to go through and show you how to build this thing uh, and explain how it all works as I go. But this is just a nice close-up look for all the redstone so you guys can see it if you just want to try and build it without me showing it or if you already built it and something's wrong and you can just click to here and see if everything looks the same. So I'm trying to show it from pretty much every angle right now. Um, okay on to the building okay so i've got a little water stream set up and the three by two hole over here um, just to give you guys a reference of everything the stream is eight blocks long because that's how long water needs to flow so now i'll set up um, my bottom redstone first um, so now there's three lanes that can go here um, the streams above this redstone are going to be eight blocks long, so we're going to make this eight blocks long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then cover that with redstone. Uh, pressure plates will be up above this thing interacting with this redstone, so that's why we need the redstone down here. I'm going to do that real quick, and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now that we got our redstone laid out, let's put our pistons in that will handle the water streams for the spiders. So we're going to put down half slabs because uh, we don't want any light to come up from the outside of this thing in here. But we want to use a um, non-solid block, something that redstone won't, well something that won't conduct redstone. So I'm just bringing half slabs all the way out and then the second one back from the end. Just delete it and then place um, some, am I in a snow biome? Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let me get a torch down to melt that guy. All right. That's weird. I didn't know I was in a snow biome. Okay. Um, yeah. 
So we get the half slabs all along here. And then the piston. Okay. So now we need um, how we're going to interact with these pistons. So um, since this is the end one here, we want... Let me just build the scaffolding first and then I'll explain it. That'll be easiest. Okay. So we have the redstone here. It'll get lit up when the pressure plates are triggered. Um, and then it'll communicate downwards using this torch here. Over to here to re-invert the signal and then up to the here. So we want it normally um, up, so the water is normally not flowing, and then the second, uh, the second the pressure plates get activated, turning on all this redstone, the thing would go down. Now, since this is an edge one, this is all we need. But for the middle ones, in fact, I'm just gonna bring this all the way out and along here. Uh, there we go. Okay, and let me go sleep real quick, and I'll be right back here. Okay. Um, yeah, so since that's an edge one, we only need one a bit like this, but for the middle two pistons, we need it to talk to both of the lanes. So this, this row of water needs to be able to get a signal from either of these lanes without those lanes interacting with each other. So we just double up on that piece of scaffolding, like so, um, and then we'll bring this guy out along here put a torch up there and then so these this lane talks on the back part this out the out, other outside lane talks in the back part and then this lane up here we'll extend it on outwards and then have it communicate up here so now you can see why we wanted half slabs here because if I had a full slab let me show you that real quick it would flash like that and that wouldn't be good at all Okay, and then we just do the same thing, a torch right underneath the piston, two torches there, torch underneath the piston, two torches there, boom, 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 with redstone. Now you don't hear the piston actuating because there's no block right below the piston for the redstone to conduct through. There you go, and there you go. And one more for this guy. Okay, and then we'll just finish off the scaffolding for over here, or the, uh, and the redstone. And a redstone torch. Awesome. Okay. So now um, we need to add the layer for the pressure plates um, to sit on. The part that the mobs are going to walk on. So I'll just, this, this will all be one solid floor. I'm just going to put this part in for now just so you can see that this is where the pressure plates are going to sit. So actually, let me make this all a solid floor and I'll be right back with you when that's done. Okay, I've made a fully solid floor here. Uh, it's eight blocks long, and um, it's wide enough to put the walls on here. So this is where these two blocks are where the pressure plates will go, there will be a wall here. Before I start putting things on that floor, I just wanna put solid blocks on the outside of these two outer pistons, because pistons are transparent, so light will be able to pass through there to allow light into this redstone area. And then um, a little bit of light could escape here, lighting up these edge pressure plates with a non-zero lighting value, lowering the chance of spawning. It will be still be below light level seven, but it'll still lower the chance of spawning. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is when this piston's down, this block will get pulled into the floor. And then um, I'm just gonna make a little L shape here. I'll explain why that is when I start adding the walls. Uh, now I'll put down all my pressure plates. Just eight. 8 by 2. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is we'll just put down... Uh, actually, let's build the wall around the outside next. So I'm just going to build a wall like this. Uh, bring it back around over here. And I'll be back with you when I'm done with that. Okay, so we got our wall on there. Now we'll go ahead and put in glass. Uh, this glass here is so that spiders, we want the glass up at this level. We need some sort of way to divide up the water stream so that the water coming along here at head height doesn't flow over to the next lane. So I'm choosing glass so that we can, it needs to be something that's a transparent block so that spiders can still have a chance to spawn 
on a block like here for say um yeah now i'm just making everything symmetrical now if you're going to have another set across the main water stream you're just going to want to continue your glass straight across you know but for this tutorial i'm not going to show that all right and then um go ahead and put your water in behind here uh i don't know okay put your water in there and now we'll test it to see if these lanes work okay cool that lane worked that lane worked and that lane worked awesome so now we'll go ahead and cover this all up with a ceiling um, Lee, we, you can bring it all the way out to the outside edge here if you want to. I'm not just not going to just to conserve some resources. Um, all right, so I'll be back with you when I have this whole thing covered up with the ceiling. Okay, I covered up with the ceiling. I left this thing open just so you could see where I brought the edge to. There's my water stream down here. Um, and yeah, the water source blocks for the head height water level are going to sit right along this layer here. Um, and I'm going to change out the block type for what I'm lifting up and down. Let's just do diamond, just for fun. Um, so these are the blocks that are going to get lifted up and down by the sticky pistons. These diamond blocks. We're in creative mode. We can use diamonds if we want to. Okay. So now let's go ahead and start putting our casing for our pistons. Um, just bring this on over here to levels high. And then we'll, we need to, like just like the pistons down below, we need to completely encase them so that as they're actuating, no light gets down into the uh, system, mob system. We want it to be as dark as possible in there. Go ahead and toss your pistons on in there. Oh, sorry for this bit of lag, guys. Ooh, it's really getting bad. Um, okay. All right. So you got those pistons on there. These blocks can get deleted. They're not needed at all. Um, okay, and now we're just going to go ahead and make a containment vessel for the water. Okay, and then go ahead and fill it up with water. All right, so now we got water and everything. Okay, uh, the next thing we need to do is bring the redstone path from below up to the upper pistons. So I'm just going to bring it on out to here. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Okay, and then we need a t torch path. So bring a path out for the torches. Okay. Redstone. And then a torch there. Torch there. Torch there. Redstone. And don't forget, we got to finish covering up all this water here. Uh, I should have done that first, but oh well. Um, not, I'm not. Got to cover up the water and the pistons, um, just to completely encase it. Like I said, okay. Now redstone there, redstone there. Uh, torch, 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 torch finish the redstone path up to it and there we go okay now let's go ahead and finish putting um encasing this guy so that no light can get in um that looks good that looks good oops okay And okay, so now that's fully enclosed. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna connect this corner just because I'm a little. I like. I want to be want it to be connected like that. And why is this here? Oop. Yeah, that didn't need to be there. There we go. All right. So now I think this thing is done. So let's go go in there and test it. Water comes along for that lane, shuts, water goes away. Water comes along, water goes away, 
and water comes along, water goes away. So that's how you build this whole thing. Don't forget to light it all up. Now that's nighttime, that's a pretty good time to show how I light it. I usually just like to put lights in all the top like this, and there, there, and there, 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 um, and then just two apart or whatever. It's up to you, really. But otherwise, um, this tutorial is done. Thank you very much for watching. Um, you would, of course, just continue modules along like this for however length, length it was. You would just mirror this thing onto the other side of this three wide hole and onto the other side of um, the water stream itself. And then if you wanted to have a lane at the end of this bit of water stream like I have up there, you would just make the... The redstone would be fairly easy. You just use these little paths here. Oh, and don't forget to light your underside so that no mobs can spawn down here. All right. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. Hope this was helpful. All right. Bye-bye.